Hello, welcome to another big cinematic review podcast. Let's once again talk about two new releases, starting with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, based on the best selling book, which itself became a very successful Swedish film in 2009, which I have not seen, and I've not read the book either. So, this new English language adaptation, directed by David Fincher, is my introduction to this story. Girl of the Dragon 2 is about a disgraced journalist named Mikkel, played by Daniel Craig, who is sued for libel. He then gets opportunity to revive his career when Christopher Plummer asks him to write about his family history and figure out who was responsible for the killing of his great niece, which is something that has been plaguing him for 40 years now. To assist him on this, he hires an antisocial but excellent computer hacker named Lisbeth Salander, played by Rooney Mara, who, of course, you may remember as Mark Zuckerberg's ex-girlfriend in The Social Network. And so they try to piece together the mystery of this. Here's a clip. Who is it? Mikael Blomqvist. Actually, I'm not really up yet. May I come in, please? Hi. You and I need to talk. I've got us some break. I'm sorry, I don't realize hey. you had Hey! Who do you think you are? I'm the guy you know better than my closest friends do. Why don't you put some clothes on? Get rid of your girlfriend. We need to talk. So that is the first meeting that happens between Mikkel and Elizabeth, which happens about an hour into the film. Now here's now here's the thing. I really like David Fincher. I think he's an exceptional filmmaker. For, if you don't know, he was, he directed The Social Network, Fight Club, Seven, Zodiac, Curious Case of Benjamin Button. So he's a very good filmmaker, and he knows how to tell you know these sort of uh, stories about psychopaths. Here's the problem, though, and frankly, why I was so disappointed with this film. The mystery is honestly not that interesting. It started off fine. I mean, there's an excellent, just phenomenal title sequence that opens the film, uh, set to Immigrant Song, which is so crazy and just so visually dynamic. And the rest of the film just doesn't quite come close to reaching that title sequence in excellence. Uh, the writing just isn't all that interesting. I mean, I don't mind a slow burning mystery. I mean, I think if done well, that can be exceptionally fascinating and intriguing and, and tense. But this film, as it went on, I just stopped caring about the conclusion. And when we get to that conclusion, I just was like, okay. I just didn't really care. Which is sad. This is for a Fincher film, for me to not care about the ending, especially a mystery, that doesn't really work. And the other main problem, too, is that Mikkel is kind of an undeveloped character. He just is kind of the same through the whole course of the film. And it doesn't help that Daniel Craig, who's usually a capable actor, is kind of monotone and boring. You know, I just did not feel fascinated by this character. It doesn't really help that the other lead, uh, Elizabeth, is so fascinating. He's the thing. This is the film that is almost saved by just how fascinating and, and well done the other lead character is. Because Elizabeth is just so well done. I mean, every time she's on screen, Fincher just wakes up. And starts directing. And it also helps that Rooney Mara gives a very good performance. And the more I think about the film, her, you know, performance is the most memorable aspect. She just digs into this character and does a phenomenal job just showing. She's antisocial, but she's bright too. She's very bright and doesn't show it, but it's a really great character. And it allows Fincher to go through the dark depths that this story requires. The best scene in the film, uh, now here's the thing, this is not a traditional Christmas release. There is a scene where Elizabeth is raped, which is an important part of the story. And later on she gets revenge on her rapist. And at that point, 
that it becomes classic Fincher. That scene is classic Fincher. It's incredibly well shot. It's exceptionally directing. The writing is strong. Uh, I mean, Mara's performance is consistently great for the whole thing. But the film just switches on the moment. And it's like, there is the potential this film had. And it's squandered because the rest of the film, when Elizabeth is off screen, and she's surprisingly off screen for a lot of time. There are a lot of points where it's just Mikkel just kind of talking to Christopher Plummer and his family and just kind of, you know, typing on his laptop and it's just Fincher. Fincher's the man who made the story of how Facebook came to be fascinating. He cannot make this mystery compelling. Which is a real shame because it's it's not a bad film. It's it's okay. I just it's just really overlong. This film did not it's two and a half hours long and at the hour point I already started getting tired of it and it's just it's really disappointing coming from Fincher and the other other I, I, I keep thinking of problems I have with it Mikkel and Lisbeth start a relationship with each other and it comes out of nowhere they don't develop it they don't foreshadow it there's no point where there's any inclination that Lisbeth is attracted to Mikkel it just suddenly happens suddenly there's a sex scene with the two of them there's no and it's like and i i watched it and it's like when did when did either of these two characters show an attraction for one another suddenly they're in a relationship together a romantic relationship and the film and that's really the problem it's not really fincher's directing and steven zalian's screenplay that i think is the fault of this film fincher's direction is the fault too because he, he can't make this average screenplay interesting and Craig just gives a dull performance but with such a fascinating lead character like Elizabeth the film should have been more interesting it should have been better plotted and frankly as a Fincher fan I am disappointed with this film uh, you know for all the hype the book has gotten and the Swedish adaptation I don't quite get it I would love someone who has read the book or seen the Swedish adaptation to tell me what exactly made this material so popular because I don't quite see it.